praise the Lord, mighty prophet of the Lord. Well, the Lord has spoken with me. The Lord Jehovah has spoken with me. Uh, Jehovah Elohim, he spoke with me this past day, within these 24 hours. And uh, in this conversation, the Lord takes me to a place. I see myself going to a place. And uh, th there is a very tall building in that place. Again, the Lord Jehovah has spoken with me today about very, very important visitation that is coming to the earth. And uh, I see that I go to a place. I take a flight. I go to a place. And uh, as I go to this place, there is a tall building that I see in front of me in that place. And then, all of a sudden, the glory of the Lord, the cloud of God, that super glorious, very, very glorious, comes and settles on the upper three, one side of the building, covers the building from out, from outside, covers the building where the Lord was taking me. Again, there is a building, and as I go there, the cloud of God comes and covers the, the, the one third of the building from up. So you see a portion of the building above the cloud, but uh, you see the cloud cover the entire bu building. This time, very, very glorious. It was very white and glorious cloud that came from heaven and covered and settled there. So again, today the Lord Jehovah, God the Father, has spoken to me about his visitation. He's going to visit a place and in this place, he will send me there. And then there's a tall building, and then the glory comes. But so many people were terrified. There was great terror. People were very terrified at the visit. And uh, people, many people lay down. Many tried to run away. There was big fear now. People feared also to enter the building because the glory of the Lord had settled on the building where the Lord Jehovah had sent me, and I'm reporting it as has happened, because I've seen it happen already. So these are the times we're living in. We're living in a very, we are living into a very mighty and historic time. And these times, it is going to be absolutely wise to be born again. To make sure you are Christian to begin with. You have received Jesus, repented of your sins and receive the Lord Jesus. And then at the same time, it's going to be very critical at this hour that uh, if you are born again as a Christian, you profess, you are a professor of the Christian faith, then it's going to be extremely important that you now subscribe to zero tolerance to sin, that the Spirit of the Lord may help you in one and only mission to develop a zero, to have a zero tolerance to sin. And that means a deliberate pursuit of suing openly and deliberately, pursuing a holy living, holy Christian life, a righteous Christian living, because of the events that have marked our age and time, the calendar of this hour towards the glorious coming of the Messiah. And so the Lord has spoken with me about a major historic visitation that is coming to a place where he's sending me to. I see I'm taking a flight. And then when I go into this place, the building I go into is tall. And then the cloud of God comes. It comes and it settles on the building. But the people are so terrified, so they fear to enter the building, and then everybody runs away. So the, we, we are living in fearful days, days of his glory, uh, the days when God the Father has decided to visit himself and prepare the wonderful and holy, mature, righteous, um, a glorious church, a glorious bride without wrinkle, without spot, without stain, mature, a church that is devoid of the sexual sin you see today, 
the dressing of women and men in the churches today, they speak immorality. He's saying, no, that is not the church he has come to prepare. He has come to prepare a church that has, is willing to tread off, to give up all those worldly ways and avail ourselves to the molding of the Lord, that the glory, the visitation of this hour, the latter glory, may polish them and prepare them for that irreversible day of the coming of the Messiah. And all these signs, these events, these visitations, they speak to, they speak into the fact that time is over and the Messiah is about to come for the church. And as the Bible has said, says like it was during the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. So you clearly can see that in the days of Noah, people were involved, they indulged themselves into the excesses of this world, the sexual immorality, giving into marriage, merry-making, what all these kind of partying and what buying things, those who are buying things bought things. Those who are selling things sold things. So they lived the, the way they wanted, free spirit, unrestrained, they didn't have any directional um, constraints on their lives. They refused, they disobeyed, they did not heed. They lived a heedless life. And people did not love righteousness. But you see that those days are repeating here, today, and now. That today, too, many people do not love righteousness. Many people prefer to live as they are. If you go into the streets of Nairobi, Mombasa, Kisumu, Kakameka, Nakuru, wherever, everywhere, Bungoma, Kitale, down to Kehancha Center, all the way to Titandei, all the cities near Rimuranga, down this way, up to Namanga, everywhere. Maralan. If you go there, you, you will feel that people are living their lives and walking around without any understanding that the Messiah is coming. If you go to London, Paris, New York City, Hong Kong, you go to Taipei, Incheon, you go to every place, Seoul, all the way to Helsinki and down into Toronto, Montreal. You go to Seattle, Washington, D.C. You go everywhere across the earth, including cities of Africa, Lagos, Swat, Abuja, as you go down to Cairo and South Africa, Angola, wherever. Every place you go to now, you'll find people living as though they are not even aware that the Messiah is coming. And there is a certain level of responsibility that accrues to them, that is levied, placed on them, apportioned to them, that they should avail themselves the visitation of this hour. So the Lord is announcing to all the nations, all the way from New Zealand, Australia, to many, many cities across Asia, Kuala Lumpur, all the way down to the islands, Hawaii, to Latin America, Caracas, Santiago, Chile, all the way to Puerto Rico, all the islands and the nations that at this hour we have to live wise and we have to be aware of our responsibility to prepare, to get prepared for the coming of the Lord. The visitation that prepares the nations and the church is here. This is what I'm announcing today. Again, that the Lord is sending me to a place. And as I go to this place, I see a tall building. As I go to that place, that building, then as the man of God enters that building, then the cloud of God comes from heaven and settles on the roof, on the top, not on the roof, on the one third part of that building. The, you can see a section, a short section of that building above the cloud, and you can see a section below the cloud that covers it, wraps the building. So this is a tremendous time in the history of the church. If the Lord God the Father himself, that is the Godhead himself, if he's deciding to make such visitations at this hour unto his servant in the eyes of all the people, then that means 
also the clock has shifted. Time has ticked. The clock has moved. Time has shifted and changed. And now the Lord is talking about visiting and preparing and the glorious kingdom of God that is coming. And that's why, for me, I would encourage every single Christian, wherever they are, to continue relentlessly in pursuit of holiness and righteousness and in their daily pursuit of rejection to apostasy, rejecting the gospel of money, 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 preaching money, money, the gospel of immorality, women can dress as they want, men can dress as they want, can they do do what they want, live as they want, living unmarried and so forth. I am calling the nations of the earth to repentance. I'm essentially calling all the nations of the earth to repentance because I'm saying we are entering the days when now the church is going to be in the presence of the glory of the Lord. God the Father himself is coming to prepare the bride of Christ. Why? Because the Messiah already finished a beautiful job of redemption on the cross, a perfect job that redeemed all people, including those that were not yet born, and across generations. What a beautiful, excellent job he did. Having done that, then it's now incumbent upon us to yield our hearts, avail our hearts, even as we become born again, continue yielding our hearts for the continual molding and molding of the hearts unto righteousness and holiness until we attain the stature of the Christ. That now is the church that I saw recently. Again, I see there is a big visitation that is coming to the earth. I see that God the Father himself he takes me to a place, and then he visits that building. But this time around, he creates a fear. So there's a tremendous fear. People run away. People run away. They don't want to enter the building after he has descended in there. And that I have spoken, I've preached, I've talked about it, and I've said that uh, the human condition, the human flesh, is not suitable for habitation, for habiting, habitation by the glory of God. But now, through Christ Jesus, he can strengthen us and make us prepare for that eternal kingdom of glory. May those who have ears know that the Messiah is coming. And this is he about whom the scriptures have written, that I'll send my messenger ahead of you before you are day, that will prepare you away when God the Father was instructing Christ regarding the day that is ahead of us here. Thank you, Shalom. Thank you.